we did an audit um, and this audit, you know, we had an outside uh, agency come in and basically tell us a lot of things that we already knew, um, but also shed some light on some things that we maybe hadn't recognized. They looked at uh, the physical aspects of what we had. So how do they walk through the buildings? How do they look at our material? How do they look at the marketing messages that we have that are out there? They also conducted interviews with a number of employees to say, talk about the company, talk about that growing process. And so when we really started to whittle down to, to what resonates, honest, energetic, and down to earth were the three things that it really goes back to the, to the original brand and what we were trying to produce at the time. We know what we want to be in emotion, right? But how do we take emotion and make it tangible? And so it really was this multiple month process of just looking at small little iterations and, and asking and answering the question, well, why? Not do you like it or don't you, but why? What's the point you're trying to draw from each one of those? Bringing in the whole color psychology thing, which you think about at times and you're like, does that mean anything? But indeed it does. I mean, there's a whole lot of history. Why are sales signs red? You know, why do grocery stores use certain colors and financials tend to lean in a certain way? There is uh, something to that. And so while we didn't hold so closely to any one thing, what we did is allow those various points of view to help shape what we actually wanted in the end. I think the original intent of the rollout of Vibrant was not to be Although bold and use of colors bold was meant to just be small use of and somewhere over those four or five years, we got a little out of control. Purple has always been that tie to Vibrant and even in the pinwheel, the pinwheel had orange and green and it was a nod to uh, Deer Harvester and the John Deere Foundation when they created and chose those original pinwheel colors, um, which made total sense in that transitional time period but none of them ever felt like ours. The original part of the lines were just to be very much a small component of what things were, right? Just introducing on the side. Um, once that went away, we started to you know, think about things from kind of a little more of a white space and where things were. And the introduction of different versions of what the logo could look like, uh, you know, my initial reaction was probably to be a little more reserved around the use of color spectrum in there. And some of that was, probably coming off the heels of using lines in general, right? And this multiple use of color. So the interesting thing about the, about the options that were presented, one of the biggest things that Matt had, had said, and I even felt it too, was like, the, what we don't want to see is too much color because we had already gone that journey and it felt wrong. And so too many colors needed to not be a part of what our logo was gonna become. Um, and we needed to keep it a little bit more polished, a little bit more grown up, a little bit less intense. And so as we went through the first set of presentations, um, Evan, Mari, and Kate each, each basically created a different concept. There's things that we like and things that we didn't really like in all, all of them, quite honestly. And none of them were exactly what, what would later become the brand. And as you started to see it take that shape and take life, it started to feel more right to go with the spectrum of color. It just, it looked good, it felt good. It, it was the right direction. I think the new font pattern in there really gives some, some clearer cut lines and a little bit cleaner look overall. Um, it's not a major shift. I don't think someone from the outside is gonna come in and go, wow, I noticed this major change to your to your font type in your logo. Um, I don't think the average member will probably notice some of those parts in there. Um, but what it starts to do is I think it sets the stage for every aspect of what we're trying to do and just growing up as a brand and an image. The font felt so classic and and like, I don't know, it just felt really good and strong until you started to see the rest of the brand come together and you're like, yeah. I think we need to look at the font. One of the interesting parts of going through the process was how we could do things on the fly as well. So uh, a big part of uh, Kate asking questions through that process of, you know, well, what is it you like about this one? Like why, why this particular font that really stood out and the things with it? Um, and what are the parts that you don't? And as you start asking and answering those questions, it was really interesting how, you know, things like, the height of our T in, inside Vibrant. And if you start looking at the way our brand is shaped up, um, that's not standard, right? That won't be a standard 
font and so the height of some of the letters like the t is one that we changed in there and that was one that you know as we were talking about well what is it about it that you don't like or like uh you know evan was able to just instantly go through and start making changes and you'd be like that that's it right there it's not that we're not a credit union it is that we are so much more than that and all of the various business lines that we've added and the ones that have not even seen the light of day yet but have been you know conceptualized um, as we've been talking through the future of the organization all of those reasons are the, the reasons why you know credit union limits who we are we're not just a credit union we are beyond that so much more beyond that and so the decision to drop that off of there while not taken lightly seemed fairly obvious that yeah, it makes sense that you don't even need that i think one of the parts that are going to be the most noticeable in our brand uh and, and the refresh that we went through was you know removing the lines really gave us an opportunity to say okay you have this strong logo in, in a pinwheel and the word vibrant, which is a bold word right off the bat. Um, how do you continue to make sure you have the right kind of accent parts that come in? So what do you do? And, and be able to do it in a way that doesn't overwhelm uh, the screen like the lines did. And, and again, lines for me, when I think of, um, it was a good out the gate start that just got a little bit too carried away and kind of put everywhere in there. Um, but you don't want to have just a white screen. That's not who we are. That's not a part of Vibrant um, to just be this blank screen in anything that we do. And so when we try to evaluate, well, if as the lines are removed, what do we have there? What, what are the parts that come in? And this concept of kind of using uh, the exploded pinwheel. So how do we take our logo, that same logo that sits over Vibrant and, uh, all the time, and not reinvent something new, but leverage that in different aspects or elements? Uh, and really we were able to take that and kind of blow it up. And so you think about being oversized and instead of having the entire logo on the screen, how to just components of that exploded pinwheel can kind of start to reach their way into the screen just a little bit. And that can be used kind of in a ton of areas. Color actually is largely who we are. We are vibrant and the word vibrant says color, right? And so with that, I think we just learned that that pinwheel is where the color is held. And then we figure out how best to leverage that spectrum of color um, in other applications. Anytime you think about different logos that are associated with brands, um, it's really hard to find one that has the power to stand alone on its own. Um, I think most of the time you find that it's either incorporated into the name or the word at all points, or it's just really hard to understand like what's the concept of that in there. Um, the pinwheel is a little bit different in my mind. Is it, it really has such a strong overarching capability in what it looks like on its own. There were elements of the Vibrant brand that were right from the very get-go. The name, the pinwheel, um, many of the sentiments that we've used in the way that we talked about the brand were totally spot on. The energy that you got from, from the color palettes and the lines and all of those things were all right. Um, the, the ice cream truck and, and all of the things that made up the brand when it originally launched are, were still very much a part of who we are and, and the brand today. And so really the whole process was just really refining and learning about who we are and pushing a little bit harder on the whys behind, well, but why is that right? Or why is that wrong? Uh, to make sure that we're not just kind of yo-yoing or changing something wholesale, but really drilling into what should it be and why should it be that? And how do we now get the outside world to see and feel the same things that we see and feel on the inside?